Okay, so um, we're going to talk about a few things, but I want students to remember one thing. Um, what we're really doing is we're analyzing a major global challenge, all right? So uh, fossil fuels are going to run out. Uh, when they do, we have to provide energy to the whole world. And so that's our global challenge that we, we've got to address. And there's a lot of issues and constraints that revolve around that solution. Secondly, we're probably going to design a solution to a really complex real-world problem. Uh, but it's so, it's so complicated, as you'll see, that we'll need to break it up into smaller parts that are manageable. Thirdly, uh, we'll want to evaluate whatever solution we come up with and determine if it's practical. You know, there's going to be some benefits. How much will it cost? Can we easily manufacture it? Will it meet the world's needs? These are things that we always have to consider. And lastly, we'll probably at some point in time use some sort of computer simulation to model the impact. In other words, if we're going to create a battery and we go through all this work to design a battery that's safe, will it still store the energy. Well, we can't build a uh, world worth of uh, batteries to determine that. We're going to have to start small, scale small, and then do some sort of math to scale up and see if it will meet the world's needs. And, uh, and that's what we're going to address here. So just to recap, um, fossil fuel is going to run out. We need renewable energy. Solar and wind is what we're currently working on. Uh, the sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day the wind doesn't always blow and even if we change our cars which are uh, they run on gasoline if we switch them to electric cars they're going to need batteries as well so battery is the key focus and so just to recap lithium ion batteries currently work with uh, a cathode and anode side and an electrolyte solution between the two and uh, there's some sort of salt that carries the electron from one side to the other um, when we charge the battery what it does is it forces the electrons to go to the opposite side of the battery than they're what they're normally used to and then when we connect the terminals the electrons have a path to go back. As we can see here, when we have a negative electrode and a positive electrode, sometimes the electrolyte solutions will interact chemically and they, they, they do this thing that's called dendrite growth. And dendrite growth is just kind of like a crystallization growth. Uh, and as you can see, it shorts out the battery. Um, when it shorts out the battery, well, the batteries catch on fire. So one possible solution that they're working on at the University of Notre Dame is an ionic liquid electrolyte. Now what this is, is this is a salt, it's a pure salt that is a liquid at room temperature. Now the benefit of that is that these ionic liquids are very stable and they do not interact with other chemicals. In other words, there isn't a chemical reaction, so it's, it's less likely to have this dendrite growth. Another thing that we could do is create like a separator using a polymer membrane. Now, when we use a polymer membrane, we're going to make it a permeable polymer membrane by putting holes in it. And that's something they also do at the University of Notre Dame. Part of the challenge is, though, is that when we take this membrane and soak it in this ionic liquid, uh, the permeable membrane diameters will change because of swelling. And so we want to make sure that these holes are just big enough for the lithium ions to pass through, but uh, small enough to block the dendrite growth. So we've got to find some sort of connection between the swelling and the ionic liquid and the membrane itself. And so one way that the University of Notre Dame does that is they use a thing called Camlet Taft values. Um, I won't go into all the details, it's a lot of fancy math, but it focuses on hydrogen bond donor or acidity and uh, hydrogen bond acceptor, best, uh, the basicity. The base now, whether something's more of a base or more of uh, an acid will impact the swelling of the polymer membrane and the, the um, acidity or the basicity of the ionic liquid is what we're interested in. And then there's a, 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 a ratio of the dipolarity and the, polariz uh, the polarizability uh, that we also can measure too. And so one of the things that I did is I went in and I looked up all the prior knowledge of Camlet Taft values with regard to ionic liquids. I picked out two, EMIM and HMIM. Those are the short abbreviated names. And then I sent samples to the Philip group to observe um, the effects of uh, the, um, these ionic liquids on the membranes that they make at the Philip group to determine if there's some sort of correlation. And that's what we're going to do is we're going to emulate uh, or simulate this in the classroom. So we're going to design a battery and we're going to talk about how the electrolyte solution 
which is really the problem, how that can be addressed. And then as a safety measure, we're going to put some sort of separator in between there to prevent the shortage, to prevent um, a fire. And then because we do not have... Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do a simulation where we're gonna build a battery. Each individual will build a battery, and where we're gonna run some tests before we scale up uh, for global domination. Right before we make uh, batteries for the entire world, we're gonna do something uh, on a smaller scale in the classroom. And I hope this helps.